welcome to this day. It is Thursday, May 14th. Now let me tell you, oh wait, before I tell you who's on our show, let me tell you about our brain teaser. We have a good one today. Today is, it's as light as a feather, but the strongest person can't hold it for more than five minutes. What is it? Okay, so that's a good one. And we'll tell you the answer later in our broadcast. But first, let me tell you who is going to be on our show. We spoke with Sue Margolis yesterday via Zoom, and uh, she has some updates regarding the United meeting. And then we also spoke with Jennifer Carmarker, and she has some Globe headlines that she'd like to share with you. So that was great to talk to both of them. Now, people are holding their meetings, so we wanted to tell you about some of the meetings that they are holding virtually. So today uh, we've got 9 a.m. is the PAC Renovation Ad Hoc Committee. At 10 a.m. we have the Third Resident Policy and Compliance. 1.30 is the GRF Community Activities Committee. And 1 p.m. is the United Maintenance and Construction. Now all of these meetings can be viewed online at lagunawoodsvillage.com forward slash meetings. And that would be at the times that you see here. So um, that's something uh, really great. They were able to get back together in a virtual virtual uh, way and be able to uh, do these meetings. Now, let's go ahead and give you our regular information for website resources that we've been providing you on a regular basis. Of course, you can always go to cdc.gov for COVID-19 information, ochealthinfo.com for numbers. That can be by state, age, and a variety of other um, things you can section out. And then usa.gov forward slash coronavirus, which is where you can see the governor's reopening of California guidelines. And then let's uh, go ahead and take, oh, and then of course we've got our Laguna Woods Village Alerts.com where you can find additional information locally. Info at Laguna Woods Village .com is where you can email us any questions. And then you can always go to our recorded hotline, which is 949-268-2019. Nine, and uh, we do update that information on a regular basis as we receive the information. Now let's take a look at your weather. It is looking very lovely, and we do have some clouds this morning, but they're burning off fairly quickly. Today, 7359, clouds, sunshine tomorrow, 7560. Saturday's looking real nice at 7860. Sunday, partly sunny and nice, 75. And then Monday, we will have some clouds again and sunny with 73.55. Let's take a look at our sunrise and sunset. Our sunrise is going to be at 551, or was 551, and our sunset is 744. And look at this beautiful photo that was sent to us by Cindy Russell. Thank you again, Cindy, for participating. We appreciate it. Now, we need some new names up there, so please send us a photo, high-resolution photo, Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. All right, when we come back, we are going to have uh, Sue Margolis with a United Update. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, today I am joined via Zoom by Sue Margolis of the United Board. Well, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm as healthy as can be so far. <laughs> hey, well, we all still are. We're doing such a good job. I, I have to say the community is pulled together and is doing the job and we are still at a very low number. So yay for us. <laughs> yes. Well, how was the United meeting? Did everything go smoothly? Yeah, we went uh, considering that it's a televised meeting it went very smoothly for what we can you do the message i want to give the people the residents is that the united merger board of directors is committed to having open dialogue with its members in spite of the situation and promote mutual respect and understanding of the resident owner's needs 
United's 2020 goals is to promote a congenial, kind approach when working with each other, its members, and the VMS staff. Some of the ways the board is committed to promoting the neighborly and kind approach to the issues are, we're trying to simplify the rules and regulations. We have 369 pages of rules and regulations. Oh <laughs> so we're trying to simplify that. Okay. We're reviewing the disciplinarian process for noncompliance and to determine what issues can be resolved prior to incurring costs or fees and negative actions. We want to do it in a positive way and get to the root cause. Right. And during the meetings, we're observing Robert's Rules of Order, so we are nice to each other and facilitating fair and reasonable communications. Good, good. Yeah, that's, that's good that you're following the, the rules of, you know, the Robert's Rules, because if you didn't, wouldn't what would happen if you didn't? It would be chaotic, and it sometimes is anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got you got some baseline, so that's good. Right. <laughs> so during the meeting, we passed two resolutions: one clarifying how appeals need to be handled when decisions don't go the way the residents like them to go, and another to change our voting procedures to align with the California Senate Bill okay. three two three. Okay. Now. The changes in the appeals process, what, what does that mean? Okay, we have residents who were fined $25 and appealed the decision going from one committee to another simply because they didn't like the verdict mm -hmm. without bringing any new factors to be considered. And we got to the point where there were three, the CEO, the CFO, there was everybody in the room and we were spending a huge amount of money and there was nothing we could, you know, we couldn't change the results. Mm -hmm. So we decided this will not do, and in order to appeal, it's necessary that new information be brought to the table. Okay. That it's not just, you can step up forever and <laughs> get your hope to find, it's like going to mama and then asking dad and then, you know. Oh yeah, you're going to get a lot of different answers, that's for sure. A lot of different right. uh, approvals, I guess you could say. Okay, well that, that's a good step in the right direction. And then the changes for the voting procedures is that something different now yeah that's a real situation that we had to get going pretty fast because we have to get ready for the voting for the new directors okay. and the uh, government the senate passed a bill which made us loosen up our voting requirements no longer can united restrict voting to only those members who are not delinquent in assessments so we used to say if you're delinquent in your assessments you couldn't vote we can't do that anymore all right. One simplification is now that in the case if the number of candidates is equal to the number of openings, we don't have to hold an election, which saves us a lot of money if that does occur. Sure. Okay, good. And that will be good. It also has explicit duties and timelines spelled out for the inspectors of the election, such as when announcements need to be made, what notices need to be sent, and so forth. And we need to get on board because the timelines are coming up really soon. And so we, we're probably looking at delaying our elections by a month in order to be able to meet this. But we did pass it, so we're ready for it. So Good. we'll get there then. Well, that must be helpful that, I mean, has there always been a timeline of some sort? Yeah, there's always been a timeline, but it's not been 90 days, it's been 30 days and things now are much longer. We yeah. have to be ready for much earlier uh, documentation sent out to people okay great and then what else what else is going on okay one of the other issues i of course that i want to bring up is i'd like to discuss i think most residents are thinking about namely what will happen with the current shelter in place orders are relaxed what are we going to do and more specifically for our board we need to contemplate how to suggest ways in which this may be done efficiently and economically for the residents of our village. Mm -hmm. So there are some specific issues that the board may want to be contemplating now while we have a few weeks before this is going to happen. And we're hoping on to have an online brainstorming session. And so we want the residents, if they have something that, they, that they've heard worked in Germany, South Korea, Italy, or any place that they've heard about, mm -hmm. we want them to encourage our residents to have some creative, suggestions and to please email them to us. Okay. And the email address is information at vmsinc.org. 
Inform.org. I N F O R M A T I O N at B M S I N C dot org. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That's that that's good. And and you know that is that something that do you think you'll have an interactive type forum for something like that where people could call in? Well, we unfortunately it's really tough to ha- answer the phones and so forth. So yeah. what we're hoping is we'll get these brainstorms and then we'll have a Zoom meeting where people can go and hear the, what's going on and what people are thinking about. Oh. So we're going to par them down to the most realistic ones and okay. have a Zoom meeting. Um, I don't want to call it a town hall, but it's a Zoom meeting. Yeah, no, uh, this will be a large job and the resident board, all the residents boards involved in participating so we can manage coll- collating the suggesting and bringing the promising suggestions to our representatives on the various boards, United, Third, GRF, and BMS. So I'm hoping that the residents will get behind us. I know all of them want to put their two cents in and we're ready to hear it. And oh, that's, that's what I'd like to have people do. That's great. And then of course, you know, board directors get together with Jeff Parker and, and you know, Jeff right. is getting together. He's constantly in contact with the health department. And then of course the directives, whatever Governor Newsom has. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big process, but you know, little by little, I hopefully we'll get back to some kind of normal. Well, it's going to be a new normal and we need to understand what the new normal will be. Right. So that's where we're at. Right. And I know everybody's ready to get out and be active, but we want to do this in a safe and responsible way. Right. Great. Great. Well, you, you're doing a great job. Hang in there on the Zooms. I know it's been it's been tough and all the virtual meetings and stuff, but slowly but surely, like you said, we'll get back to some sort of new normal. Thank you so much, Lisa. All right. Thank you, Sue. Have a good day today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And thank you for joining us. We'll be right back. Today, we are marking the beginning of a new era as City of Hope opens its first location right here in Newport Beach. We have 500 scientists and doctors who have dedicated their lives to beating cancer. So they use that intellectual capital to try to make sure every patient gets the best care possible that's known to science. Well, today we have Jennifer Carmarker here, who's going to give us the Globe headlines. Well, welcome, Jennifer. How are you? I'm wonderful, Lisa. It's great to be here again. Yes, thank you for joining us via Zoom. Seems to be, like I said before, our mode of operation, and I'm not sure when that's going to go away. So as of now, it's going to be for a while. I think so. So (laughs) we'll just conduct it this way. So, gosh, we did have we had a huge, huge event happen uh, last week. I believe it was. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, um, it was very exciting. Um, And it's actually, I think it happened at a couple different dates at clubhouses, but um, on our cover today, we have a story about um, the Village Management Services mask giveaway. Uh, Residents who were out and about on April 29th may have noticed epic traffic jams around Clubhouse 3 and 5. Village Management Services, in conjunction with the foundation, uh, were giving out free face masks to residents that day, and they gave about uh, 3,000 out that day, and um, later in in subsequent events, they gave out more. With drivers lining up for one mask per car, the turnout evidenced um, still how many residents need face masks in the village. And later, the masks were also distributed throughout various Laguna Woods Village neighborhoods with the help of block captains and some of the clubs. And to date, village employees and volunteers have passed out 19,000 masks and counting. And actually many more if you count the village groups such as the sewing supers, individual residents, clubs, and local church groups that are also distributing masks to seniors. Um, And I want you to know that anyone who still needs a mask can get a mask by calling social services and they will mail one to you on a first come first serve basis. That's great. So they are available. Huge, huge cooperation between many people 
to get that going. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. I'm happy that everybody has a mask. There's really no excuse not to wear a mask as instructed. So, right, right. Yeah, and we have some great, keep great wearing those at the grocery stores for sure. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I wear mine anytime I leave the house. Yeah. So it's fine. just good, pra- I, good practice to get into. One of those things, you know, and I, I'm actually okay with it. I'm not, I, I mean, I don't really like it that much, but it's, it's, it's better right. than getting it. So. Yeah. And you get used to it after a while. So that's right. No big that's deal. Right. That's right. So anyway, we have some great pictures of the operation and um, inside the globe today. So I think readers will enjoy seeing that. Um, And we also this week have our occasional column called Bravo Laguna Woods. And that is basically um, an area to celebrate our um, residents and groups that are doing good things. Mm -hmm. And um, today in Bravo, we have Laguna Woods residents Anna Chu and Phil Silverman. They've joined musical forces to bring a little light and song to villagers weary of staying indoors. The duo's most recent performance was a Cinco de Mayo celebration. Um, it was at the intersection of Avenida del Sol and Miembro in Gate 11. Mm-hmm. And people brought lawn chairs and drinks and appetizers and even did a little dancing, I'm told. Ah. So we have, uh, we have a photo of Anna in, um, in the Globe today. Um, and she, she says she often um, sings just for neighbors um, in the evenings around sunset. So if you live near Gate 11, you might be able to catch her in song some evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a great singer. I um, think she's been doing that. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So also in Bravo today, um, several Laguna Woods residents who are responding to the needs of those affected by the coronavirus emergency are preparing meals for the Friendship Shelter in Laguna Beach. They're also preparing meal kits for distribution to, by South County Outreach, and they contributed nearly $2,000 to Laguna Food Pantry. Mm-hmm. Bruce Johnson, John Mendonca, Sue Deering, and Rona Henry are among the residents who are working through Tapestry Unitarian Universalist Congregations Welcoming Neighbors Home Initiative. And uh, also residents Barbara Ann Watkins and Connie Grooms contributed to Tapestry's Meal and Care Kit that generated 140 kits. Wow, that's great. So we have them today in the globe. And also a final shout out goes to Laguna Woods Village American Legion Post 257. Now during the facility shutdown, Um, There have not been enough employees to raise and lower the flags at the clubhouses. Mm -hmm. So they stepped up and assisted, and um, they have been raising and lowering the flag every day. Good. Excellent. Nice. So bravo, bravo to them and everybody who is doing good things for the village. Yeah, Yeah. and there's a lot of really good stuff that comes out of the village right now, and it's really, I mean, it's always been good, but there is ever coming together. If... Yeah, and if people would like to give a shout out to somebody, just send me an email, J-K-A-R-M-A-R-K-A-R at scng.com, and um, we'll get them in an upcoming Bravo issue. Excellent. Good idea. Good idea. All right, what else do you have? Well, we have um, the United Mutual, of course, met this week via Zoom. And we have a recap of their meeting. Um, And it started out with uh, Jeffrey Parker, of course, the CEO, um, talking about doing a phased reopening. Um, Of course, uh, early opening this week did not happen for tennis. However, residents may want to keep their rackets at the ready for Monday because that is the reopen date for the tennis center. Um, He announced that on Tuesday. And Parker also noted the long-term plans to reintroduce outdoor activities in a phased, um, sort of phased uh, rollout. Right. Um, and that started with golf last week and then tennis and, and we'll see what comes next. Um, Parker said that in sync with state and county orders, VMS staff has been piecing together a comprehensive phasing plan for reopening activities, which will also consider resident input as well as the exceptional vul- vul- vulnerability, can't say that word, of the community. Uh, currently, the city of Laguna Woods as a whole remains at eight cases of COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, United. United also approved a resolution amending the appeal policy to allow a member to appeal only in the event of new information involving issues such as architectural, landscape, disciplinary, occupancy, and membership issues. Uh, in, In only extraordinary circumstances, members will have 30 days to submit a written appeal at the discretion of the board as proposed. Okay. Um, and I believe that has to uh, go on a 28 day waiting period. Um, it will come back to the board again next month. Okay. All right. Uh, sadly, I sadly, know, we received. I know, 
I'm so sad. Yeah. I just read your little note. I feel so sad. Go ahead. <laughs> Sadly, we, we received word this year, this pageant of the Masters show has been canceled. And the decision comes amid official stay-at-home and social distancing orders and Governor Newsom's announcement of a phased reopening plan for California. Given the government guidelines surrounding the coronavirus pandemic, the likelihood of mass gatherings being okay this summer is just not plausible, officials said. Now, each year, the pageant and the Festival of Arts draw more than 225,000 people. Um, and from all over Southern California to Laguna Beach. This year's show, Made in America, would have been the pageant's 86th show. Yeah, so, crazy. but it's a shame. It's not a good idea to have it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think that's, you know, um, there's gonna be certainly other things that are going to be be canceled as well. So um, as we hear about them, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, but anyway, there is a story, more, more on that story in the Globe today. And that was written by Erica Ritchie, of course, okay. who all of our, your viewers know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I thought we would end with some letters. Wonderful. So this week's letters um, include a couple urging residents to wear face masks, um, both in their neighborhoods and in the stores as we were talking. Um, there's a letter suggesting that the city councils of both Laguna Hills and Laguna Woods work together on reopening plan for businesses. Um, there's a couple uh, letters of praise, including this one from Robert Noonan. And Robert writes, I would like to thank Mr. Alfredo Castro and his hardworking crew of seven for their outstanding performance exhibited during a massive tree trimming campaign in our area. Every tree was inspected. His crew was professional and hardworking. Their breaks and lunch times were observed safety procedures were followed. The woods can use more employees like them. Oh, so, that's so nice. Yeah, yeah nice. They recognize yeah. people working hard. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. we had a couple nice letters this week. So Wonderful. that's what's going on in the Globe today. All right. Well, we love that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people can get the Globe if they've subscribed. And what would be the phone number that they could subscribe? Yeah. They can call our office and I will pick up their messages. It's 949-837-5200. Okay. And also I am told that they have installed a rack outside Polly's Pies for the Globe. Wonderful. So if you want to purchase a single copy, go over to Polly's and hopefully, fingers crossed, they will have them there. I love it and pick up a pie for me. <laughs> there you go. Yum, yum. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, you have a great day and thank you for joining us. Great. It was great to see you. Thanks, Lisa. Take care. All right. Talk to you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. And we'll be right back after this. COVID-19 is a serious respiratory disease. There are simple steps we can all take to stay healthy and protect our community. Wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and warm water. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces daily. Cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue or elbow and avoid touching your face. If you do have symptoms like cough and fever, stay at home and call your doctor. When we all do our part, we can keep California healthy. For more information, visit covid19.ca.gov. Welcome back. All right, so we're gonna read the question one more time for our brain teaser. It's as light as a feather, but the strongest person can't hold it for more than five minutes. What is it? Well, if you guessed your breath, you are correct. So I thought that was a good one. So they're all been so much fun. So I'm glad you guys are liking these. All right, let's tell you about some of our concerts that we have. Our concert for the day is a really good one. It's going to be a Jazz Foundation concert put on by the Jazz Foundation of America. And it's Join the Jazz Foundation and Relix for the 2020 COVID-19 Musicians Emergency Fund. And it is featuring Dee Dee Bridgewater, Elvis Costello, Kim Wilson, Robert Cray, and Bootsy Collins, Wayne Shorter, the Count Basie Orchestra, Herbie Hancock, 
sextet, and many, many more. This looks like a really good one. And this is going to be at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that is today. And uh, you can look up the new gig uh, and find uh, the, you can just type in Jazz Foundation of America uh, on the internet and that should be able to find it. So very fun, very cool. All right, let's look at our pickathon for today. Our pickathon concert is going to be Built to Spill and that'll be at 1 p.m. on YouTube and you just type in pickathon. Now, our movie for Friday, tomorrow, is called Instant Family, and we have a clip for you, so take a look. You guys are obviously never having kids. What was that look? I did not do a look. You're doing a look right now. There's no look. Have a good fight, guys. There's so many kids in foster care, and they're having an orientation. Ellie, people who take in foster kids are really special. The kind of people who volunteer when it's not even a holiday. We don't even volunteer on a holiday. Over a half million children are currently in foster care. The county puts these on because they can match a lot of kids and parents quickly. Look at the big kids. Everybody's avoiding them. I'm going to go and say hi. But they're teenagers, OK? They use drugs, and they watch people playing video games on YouTube. We're not equipped for any of that. Hi. Just FYI, we can all hear you. Hmm? It's OK. Go mingle with the kitties and uh, don't give it another thought. Bye-bye. She was cool. Lizzie comes with two younger siblings. Three kids? Too much. Oh, oh my God. God. They're adorable. Why would you show us that? That's wrong. Yeah. Make yourself at home because you're at home. Do you like the Clippers? Oh, I'm more of a Lakers fan. Oh, no. You hit me because I like the Clippers. I think the Clippers are awesome. They were smart for trading Blake Griffin, their best player. <laughs> Ow, watch it. Ow. Just stay there until the fire department comes, OK? You're just another white lady who wants to adopt charity orphans to make you feel good about yourself. Pretend mom. We might have a little bit of a knack for this. Oh. Eh, I beg to differ. <laughs> this stuff takes time. Lizzie yeah. had to parent Juan and Lita all by herself. This is never going to be easy, but with some structure and love, you could make your house a home. Good movie. I actually saw it, and you know, some some parts are kind of frustrating because you're watching these poor folks go through this. But nonetheless, that is a good movie, and that is sponsored by Memorial Care, and that will be Friday, Instant Family, at 2 p.m. with subtitles and 7 p.m. without subtitles. So take a look at that one tomorrow. Let's take a look at our weather one more time. It's looking very nice out. We've got a few scattered clouds, some uh, overcast for a little while, and. It was uh, interesting the other day, we did have a little sprinkle, so that was kind of crazy. But nonetheless, it's gonna look really good this week. We've got partly sunny, 73.59, clouds and sunshine, 75.60, partly cloudy on Saturday, but looking nice at 78. Sunday, 75, partly sunny, and then on Monday, we have some more AM clouds coming our way, and that'll be 73. Have a great day in the village, and we will see you again tomorrow. And you can watch our rebroadcast at 12.30 and 5. Stay safe. My name is Nicholas Irizarry. I'm the president and CEO of Align Wealth Advisors here in Laguna Hills, California. For over 30 years, I've helped my clients through thick and thin times. Of course, these are times where people need help most, and we're available. If you're interested, give us a call. My number is 949-715-8585, and I wish you and yours good health.